In 2016, the entire internet in the East Coast of the United States goes offline for hours. It's unlike anything ever seen. And then just a week later, the entire country of Liberia goes offline for a week. People think this is the work of North Korea, China, but everyone had it so wrong because reality was much different. It was just a 19 year old kid in his dorm room that made this malware trying to make a little bit of money playing Minecraft and it got out of hand. And that's the story I'm telling you about today, the Mirai botnet, one of the worst botnets we have ever seen. And it continues to affect us to this day. This story starts at a Rutgers University. Paris Jaw, he's a computer science student and gets a full ride there. And like any kid in college, he needs to pay some bills, so he gets a side job. But for him, this was a dream job. He was to get a job working at a Minecraft server programming. You see, in Minecraft, anyone can set up their own server and we can charge players to come on, charge them for upgrades, and there is big money to be made. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars a month you could make. And a lot of these servers are ran by 18, 20 year old kids. So competition is tough and ethics are out the window. So much so that they're willing to pay hackers big money to take down the competition. Hackers are what they're called booter services, would get paid the DDoS rival servers and kick off all the customers online. And then those players would hopefully funnel over into your server. And this is a known thing that even for the hackers, Minecraft is pretty big money. So Paris sees this going down and he's pretty shocked. I mean, he always grew up as a good kid, always wanting to do the right thing. He thinks to himself, why not protect these servers from these DDoS attacks? Because he saw how rampant they were. So. In 2016, Paris starts ProTraft Solutions, a DDoS protection firm, protecting Minecraft servers from these DDoS attacks. But then a year goes by and business is damn tough because Paris is on the verge of going out of business. He completely underestimated the competition within the DDoS protection space. You had other companies like ProxyPipe and OVH. Paris's customers were leaving and going to. He was losing so many customers that he was about to go bankrupt. So to prevent that from happening, he messages all of his coworkers to see if they have anything around the office they could sell. So one of his coworkers, he comes back with an offer that Paris can't refuse. He says that he's been building a botnet secretly for the last couple of months. And he knows some people that are willing to pay them 10 to 20 grand to use this botnet and hack for hire. Now Paris was pretty shocked because what he was suggesting was that they do the exact thing that their company sets out to protect but he needed the money bad. I mean, he couldn't let his parents down. He couldn't let this business fail and all of his employees down. So he justifies it to himself saying, you know what? We can just build this out, do it maybe for a couple of months, make some money and never tell anyone, inject the money back into ProTraff. Though if they were to really do this, they couldn't do it under his real name. So hackers have two names they go by, their real name and their online name. So Paris's uh, online name was Anna Senpai from some hentai or something. So now with their identity is underway, they made a fake docs leading to a kid in Turkey, Facebook account, Reddit account, Hack Farms account. They were ready to go. What they were building was what the FBI would say is the Manhattan Project of botnets. Now what made Mirai so deadly? See, a botnet is just a collection of online devices that can point all of the web traffic they could generate at one website or service and take it offline. And botnets before Mirai were made with using PCs and computers, but people take security a lot more seriously on that than they would their smartwatch, their smart with the advent of all the internet of things smart devices we have, Mirai was taking advantage of those. It would run a list of 300 usernames and passwords from the manufacturer against all of these devices online. And if anyone never changed the password, it would be infected with Mirai. Now using that technique, Mirai built itself to be over 750,000 infected devices. Now with Mirai built, it's time to make a little bit of money. So they were charging what's called seats on a booter service, which is the botnet. So these seats can go anywhere from a thousand to 5,000 a week. And they were charging this to rival Minecraft servers to take down their competition. And Paris is making really good money. He's probably making 10 to 30 grand a week at this point. But just like in Breaking Bad, this is a good look for you. Once you make a little bit of easy money, it is really hard to stop because it's almost an addiction at that point. So remember all those customers that left ProTraff in the first place that went to his rival competitors? Paris wants to win them back, but through something uh, it's very unique, a friendly extortion where the customer didn't know about it. He would attack the rival DDoS protection firms, go to the companies that they were clients of and say, hey, I saw that you guys got hacked. You guys use this person to protect you. We can protect you even better at ProTraff. And he was stealing customers by the dozens from these huge companies. Anna Senpai was a tyrant, or Paris, because if you didn't leave and go to ProTraff, 
Dana Senpai would come to you the next week with a lovely extortion email saying, we are going to DDoS the hell out of your website. And if you don't pay up within 24 hours, it's gonna be 10 Bitcoins. And if you don't pay within four hours after the attack, it's gonna be double the 20. Paris is making crazy money at this point. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. But what he was doing was loud. People were noticing servers are getting taken down. DDoS protection firms are noticing that their customers in whole are leaving to go into ProTraf, some small scrappy startup ran by a kid in a storm room. So Paris realizes he needs to cool down for a bit. And in a complete shock, he gets the source code for the Mirai bot at the worst bot we've ever seen and puts it out on hack forms for free for anyone to download. And at that point, Paris wrote a letter saying he was stepping out of the DDoS for higher world. He was done with the game. That was the last time we ever saw of him. Today, it's rumored that he's in with a Chilean escort down in the lovely country of Argentina. I'm just kidding. Now with Mariah out of his hands, Paris went to less noisy money-making schemes, mainly involving click fraud, where blogs and other websites will hire his botnet to do fake clicks on the ad so the blog owner gets all the revenue. And he's doing this, and now he's making really good money, and it's a lot quieter. But with Mariah out in the wild, it was taking a life of its own. People were using the botnet source code and repurposing it into even worse botnets that were deadlier than before. Now they were taking down entire banks all throughout the European Union. They were shutting down the internet in the East Coast in the United States. They shut down the entire country of Liberia, wrecking the only undersea internet cable going into the country. Now, all the authorities of the world were fearful of this because this is around the 2016 election in the United States. So Obama specifically stated that they needed to get this figured out because they could not have this botnet affect election day. The FBI gets that overtime pay they need to solve this case and who was the creator of the Mirai botnet. Now the problem with trying to figure out who it was was that a lot of the infected devices were held in overseas countries, mainly in Indonesia and Malaysia. So for the FBI to actually prosecute this case, they needed to find one infected device within the United States that they could take as evidence. So they waited around for weeks and then it came to months, and they find one device that came available in Alaska. So FBI agents fly up to Alaska and then fly into a remote town on a boat plane into a town that barely had electricity. They find the infected device in Alaska, and then it routes out to a VPN node in France, and then from there, they found the command and control server leading back to Paris and a senpai. At this point, they had him cornered. So when the FBI came there to arrest him, his parents could not believe it, and they're seeing their son being walked out of the house in handcuffs. So during the court case, Paris was incredibly helpful. He was giving them everything they needed to solve not only his crime that he committed, but also other botnets for hire. And he opened up an entire world of these DDoS for hire industry to the FBI. So when it came down to the sentencing, they begged for leniency because he was facing up to anywhere from 25 to 30 years in prison. So it came down to the sentencing and the judge gave him four months of home confinement, four years of community service, and a $8.9 million restitution to pay. Though is the story of Mirai over? Far from it. The source code for Mirai makes up 70 to 80% of all botnets still to this day and people are repurposing it into even stronger botnets committing click fraud, using them to take down websites and services. It was truly the Pandora's box that Paris had released. And I think it's mainly impressive that you have a kid that was in his early 20s in college that made something that governments around the world thought was the work of some nation state trying to commit World War III. So where's Paris at today? Remember those uh, community service hours that for four years that he had to do? So he's currently serving that with the FBI and he's been a huge help to them from what I could read. He's already done Done about two years of service with them, solving cases that involve his own Mirai source code that he released into the wild. It would be, I make a mess and the FBI sits there and says, clean this up. And that's my punishment. And that's the story of the Mirai botnet. If you guys have any questions, hit me down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.